22 Tiger Barbs are having lunch. On the menu today, frozen bloodworms. And, despite their name, bloodworms are not really worms at all. They are, in fact, the aquatic larva of a small flying insect known as a midge. Midges resemble mosquitoes, and like mosquitoes, midges lay their eggs in fresh water. The eggs hatch and the larvae are completely aquatic until they mature, at which point they undergo a complete transformation and then leave the water as a fully developed flying adult. I collected this specimen from one of the outdoor tubs where I keep fish and plants during the warm months of the year, and with a bit of research you could probably culture your own bloodworms to feed to your fish. But caution is advised because coming into contact with these worms can cause a severe allergic reaction in some individuals. Symptoms can include difficulty breathing, skin rashes, red, watery eyes, sneezing, and blisters. If you thaw the frozen bloodworms in water before using, be very careful not to get any of the liquid in your eyes or on your skin. And if you use freeze-dried bloodworms, be very careful because dust from the dried worms can become airborne and then is easily inhaled. Some allergic reactions can worsen over time and after repeated exposures to bloodworms. And there are warnings on the label, but most people probably don't bother to read them. Like most allergies, some people really suffer while others see little to no effect. These tiger barbs, for instance, seem to have no trouble coming into very close contact with these bloodworms. I prefer to use frozen bloodworms rather than the freeze-dried variety, and the single-serving frozen cubes make it easy to feed and eliminates the possibility of accidentally inhaling small pieces of the worms. This little bloodworm has built a tiny shelter out of debris where it can hide while its body gradually changes. And here is the same bloodworm at a later stage of development. The strange tail that it had earlier is now gone, and it's been replaced by something that resembles the tail of a shrimp. It also now has these white growths on its head. These are called thoracic horns, and they function like gills in order to provide oxygen for the rapidly developing larva. Bloodworms are often recommended to fish keepers who are trying to bring their fish into optimal condition so that they can breed them. However, caution is advised because some species of dwarf cichlids such as epistogrammas and German blue rams have reportedly had trouble digesting bloodworms and have become sick as a result. It seems that the digestive system of some species may be unable to handle the hard exoskeleton of these worms, and the end result can be constipation, bloating, and in extreme cases, even death. In some situations, overfeeding may also be to blame, so these protein-rich worms are best used as an occasional treat rather than something that's fed to the fish on a daily basis. Another possible problem that might arise comes from the use of inferior quality bloodworms. You see, bloodworms are bottom feeders and they can thrive in polluted water where there's lots of decaying organic matter and very little oxygen. These places are a haven for bacteria, disease, and parasites. In some cases, bloodworms are harvested from the polluted runoff that's produced by pig farms. So, if the worms are not purged and properly cleaned after they're harvested, they can contain lots of nasty little surprises. I use frozen bloodworms made by Hakari. They're high quality, and I've never had any trouble. And as far as the fear of introducing a parasite along with the bloodworms, I assume that the freezing process probably kills any parasites that might be hitching a ride with the worms. And speaking of worms, let's see how our little friend, the live bloodworm, is doing. The bloodworm has now become a pupa. This is the last stage of its aquatic phase, and soon it will leave the water and take to the sky where it will then be known as a midge fly.
At this stage, you can see the typical compound eyes of a fly, along with the wings, the antenna, and the legs. Unfortunately, this little bloodworm never got a chance to spread its wings because it died the following day. And I can only assume that I'm the one to blame. And that brings us once again to the true stars of the video, the 22 hungry tiger barbs who seem to have no trouble eating all of the bloodworms that I can supply. However, too many of these protein-rich worms can cause your tiger barbs to get ridiculously fat and round. Bloodworms are also a great way to get your bristlenose plecos and Corydoras catfish in prime shape for breeding. In fact, most catfish really love bloodworms, and they seem to have no trouble at all digesting them. In order to keep the bloodworm cube in the center of the camera frame, I used a sewing needle to run a piece of thread through the center of the bloodworm cube so that the hungry barbs couldn't swim away with it. By the way, there are saltwater bloodworms and freshwater bloodworms, and they are completely different types of creatures. Fishermen use the saltwater bloodworms as bait, and they are in fact actual worms, while, as you probably know by now, the freshwater bloodworms are insect larvae, so they're not really worms at all. And as this video draws to a close, there are three things that I'd like you to take with you when you're done. 1. Bloodworms are a potent allergen, so please be very careful. I'm trying to gain subscribers, not lose them in some freak accident involving bloodworms. 2. Some fish, such as dwarf cichlids, can have trouble digesting these worms, so please use caution when feeding small cichlids. And finally, the third takeaway message from all of this is that the Dave makes really great videos, so you should probably like, subscribe, and leave a comment.